So there is another uh, very important phenomena in nonlinear systems, which is called limit cycle. What is limit cycle? To understand it, uh, let's uh, consider uh, linear systems again. In linear systems, if the eigenvalues are uh, purely imaginary, what is shape of the response? Oscillat oscillatory response. Uh, for example, here you have uh, a, a linear system. Uh, the eigenvalues can be easily determined. And uh, the response of the system uh, to initial conditions for different con initial conditions is plotted over here. What you observe is that the amplitude of these oscillations that depends upon uh, initial condition. This is first thing. Secondly, these oscillations are not robust. What do we mean by robust oscillations? Uh, oscillatory response will be in the case when eigenvalues are purely imaginary. For example, due to some uncertainties, uh, eigenvalues move slightly towards left or towards right. Then what will be the situation? Right. So either oscillations will decay down or these will grow. Uh, if uh, eigenvalues move in the left half S plane, the system will become stable and oscillations will decay down to zero uh, at time equal to infinity. And if uh, the eigenvalues move to the right hand, uh, right half S plane, the system will become unstable, oscillations will grow and system will become unstable. So uncertainties and disturbances are always there in real physical systems. Therefore, in linear systems, you will never observe such kind of oscillatory behavior, right? In simulations, yes, because in simulations, there is no uncertainty, no disturbance. So in simulations, you have uh, such kind of oscillatory behavior. However, uh, for real systems, if these are uh, linear systems, you can never uh, observe uh, such kind of uh, uh, sustained oscillations. These will either decay down to uh, origin or these will grow uh, to become very large, right? Compared to that, uh, so that is uh, the meaning of non-robust oscillations and therefore these are difficult to keep and amplitude of oscillations that also depends upon uh, initial conditions. Compared to that, in nonlinear systems, you can have uh, sustained oscillations which are robust and which the amplitude of these oscillations will be independent of initial conditions. To understand it, we consider uh, a differential equation, uh, the nonlinear, a nonlinear differential equation. Where is nonlinearity? Here, x square and then multiplied by x dot. So that uh, creates uh, nonlinearity in this differential equation. Uh, this mathematical equation uh, is uh, a model of, uh, for example, this uh, spring mass spring damper system with position dependent damping coefficient. Uh, here we are not uh, learning mathematical modeling. However, uh, those who are well familiar with mathematical modeling of these systems, they can easily obtain uh, the, uh, this mathematical equation, we know that the uh, external force applied, that is equal to sum of all the forces which are opposing forces. This is uh, opposing force. Uh, this damper uh, applies an opposing force and the inertia of this uh, applies uh, an opposing force. So this term is inertia of the mass. This is uh, the force uh, due to uh, damping and this is due to spring. The only difference uh, between uh, the, uh, the models which you have uh, studied in earlier uh, courses and the one over here is that here damper is not a linear damper. The damping coefficient depends upon the position uh, of the damper. So anyway, uh, we only look at this differential equation and uh, uh, this can also represent uh, some other uh, electrical circuits with nonlinear resistors. Uh, so in this equation, you will observe sustained oscillations. Let's uh, implement it in MATLAB and 
this is implementation of the same equation. Uh, here is x. So this one is, uh, what is this thing? x dot and this will be equal to x double dot. So x double dot, that is equal to uh, uh, that nonlinear uh, damper. That equation is implemented over here. Uh, this is uh, this is x square, right? Uh, x square, and this is one one minus. Uh, so here is one minus x square multiplied by some constant uh, that was uh, written by c in that equation, and then that multiplied by x dot. So that is uh, the term due to uh, that damper, and this uh, is due to the spring. And here it is, uh, anyway, you know how to implement that uh, state equation. We uh, simulated for different initial conditions. For example, this initial condition is 1, and this is set to be equal to 5, right? And we see the response of this uh, system. So, uh, I think it is visible. Uh, so, for this initial condition, uh, the response finally converged to some periodic oscillations. These are not sinusoids, but these are periodic oscillations. And uh, what is the uh, amplitude of these oscillations? Uh, something uh, nearly equal to 2. Uh, oscillations uh, of amplitude equal to uh, 2. Let's simulate it for some other initial condition. For example, uh, x, uh, this initial condition equal to, let's say, 2. Uh, with this initial condition, again, you had uh, oscillations. Amplitude of these oscillations is again equal to 2, nearly equal to 2. Uh, if it is not visible over here, you can see it in this... Uh, diagram. I have uh, sketched it over here for different initial conditions. For initial condition uh, equal to 2, you had periodic oscillations with amplitude nearly equal to 2. This is a response for initial conditions equal to uh, x equal to 5. And this is response of the system plot of uh, this uh, state x. Uh, only one state is plotted. Second state is not uh, plotted over here. So for x uh, equal to minus 4, this is the response. So in all the cases, uh, amplitude of oscillations, these are uh, fixed. Always amplitude is 2. That is different uh, from the case for linear system. And furthermore, these oscillations are robust against uncertainties. We shall talk about these limit cycles in more details in later lectures. Uh, is this concept also clear? Concept of uh, limit cycles? So we can also talk about in other phenomena in nonlinear systems. Yes. Uh, so <clears throat> the question is uh, whether these uh, oscillations are desirable in systems or undesirable. So in some cases, these are desirable. Uh, for example, in oscillator, if you want to design an oscillator, you would like to have oscillations in that uh, system. And uh, you cannot design oscillator with linear systems. Oscillators are always designed with nonlinear. And in some cases, these oscillations are, in, rather in many cases, these oscillations are undesirable. For example, you design some mechanical system and uh, there are uh, vibrations and oscillations in that system that will mechanically damage that particular system. Likewise, uh, in electrical circuits, uh, that will be wastage of electrical power. Oscillations, sustained oscillations mean uh, current will be flowing in uh, the resistors and that will uh, result into power losses. So in many cases, these oscillations are undesirable. But these are there in nonlinear systems, and in uh, later lectures, we shall learn how to remove these oscillations in uh, systems. How to, uh, what, uh, what strategy should we follow to re reduce or to eliminate these oscillatory, uh, uh, these oscillatory responses? So, if you remove oscillations, the uh, 
That will be in nonlinear systems, uh, these are sustained. If even if you simulate it for very large times, you will observe that these are there. In and in physical systems, even in physical systems, you will observe uh, these oscillations. Uh, why? Uh, uh, for example, these oscillations grow uh, due to any uncertainty. These oscillations, magnitude of oscillation tends to glow, grow. Then what will happen to this thing? What will happen to this thing? This thing, if x square increases, so there will be more damping in the system, more friction, more friction. What is purpose of friction? That will try to damp out oscillations. That will try to uh, reduce the magnitude of oscillations. Is it clear? If this due to uncertainties, if due to uncertainties are any disturbances, if this magnitude of this oscillation grows, becomes larger than this uh, value too, then this damping, this will become more positive and the effect of damping is to reduce oscillations. So what will happen when the magnitude of this oscillation reduces? What will happen to in that case? For example, when it becomes less than 1. So, here is now negative friction. Negative friction. Friction kya hoti hai? Wo to oscillation isko cheez, uh, uh, motion ko uh, uh, oppose karti hai. What is negative friction? So, that will tend to grow the oscillations. That is, if uh, oscillations in the system, they tried they are reduced due to some disturbance and uncertainties this damper will tend to enlarge those oscillations and if these are enlarged become larger than 2 then this damping that will uh, now it will be positive damping it will tend to uh, reduce those oscillations so this damper nonlinear damper will tend to maintain uh, the magnitude of these oscillations at this steady state value.